I'm here in Medjugorje and I'm with, what's your name, Sister? Sister Francesca. And where are you from? I'm originally from the Bronx, New York. And how does it come that you ended up in the order of the Benedictines of the Divine Men in Italy? <laughs> I, the short answer is the Lord has a sense of humor. <laughs> That's true. Um, right? The yeah. little bit of a longer answer is um, right around the time I was discerning the religious life, um, yeah. a very good friend of mine for many years, we were part of the same circle of friends in New York, mm -hmm. He was a Benedictine monk in a monastery in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. um, and he had the same s spiritual director as my mother superior, Mother Gabrielle Marie. He's mm -hmm. passed away now a couple of years ago, um, Father Jacques Daly. Yeah, so um, they were discerning together to start this new community right around the time I was discerning the religious life. Mm -hmm. um, and Father Elijah came home to visit his family one Christmas, and he wanted all the gang to get together. And so he called a friend of mine, and she said, well, I don't know, gang is, can get together. Everybody had left for the religious life at that point. We had an amazing group of friends where we just, they were very normal. We would go to movies, go out to dinner. Somebody would we'd take turns and play games and cook at somebody's house. But they also had a very deep faith. Mm -hmm. They went to adoration. They went to daily mass. Um, and I learned a lot from them. I fell in with a good crowd, which is, you know, really a great blessing from God. Mm -hmm. But the problem is with having good religious Catholic friends, they all end up leaving you for the religious life. <laughs> so there was just two of us left who uh -huh. were still looking for our vocation. We didn't know if we were called to be married or, or to become sisters or to remain single in the world. Um, so when he came home, he contacted a friend of mine who was somewhere else with her family for Christmas. So um, it was just me that was left. So we got together and we had dinner. Um, and it was just one of those grace-filled conversations where I was sharing what was on my heart that I felt like the Lord was starting to call me. And he was sharing what was going on in his life with his discernment and starting this community um, mm -hmm. and we've remained in contact for the next several months and it was just one of those special graces where I knew this is where I belonged and he put me in contact with Mother Gabrielle Marie mm -hmm. um, and I met her in Pennsylvania at a mutual friend's house and I had I was so sure that I quit my job I was a teacher in the Bronx it was a good job. I loved it, loved kids. I had an apartment, a car, security, friends. In every other way, I felt fulfilled, but I knew there was something missing because the Lord was calling me to belong just to Him. Yeah. So um, I met Mother Gabrielle Marie, and she mm -hmm. was still a poor Claire of perpetual adoration at that point mm -hmm. um, on a sabbatical. And she invited me to come with her to Italy. It was actually October 1st, the Feast of the Little Flower, 2010. Mm -hmm. um, we went to Italy to study Italian and, and to find a bishop who would accept our new community. And the Lord, through the director of our Italian school, almost immediately found, found a bishop to accept us. Cardinal Burke um, gave his recommendation because mm -hmm. Mother knew him, and she called him for a recommendation um, and the rest is history. <laughs> wow, there you are. Yeah. And um, what is your connection to Medjugorje? Medjugorje, again, another answer that the Lord has a sense of humor. Um, I had a friend before I entered the religious life who went to Medjugorje who had a great, powerful experience and I always wanted to go too. Um, and then when I was called to the religious life, I said, oh, I guess, Lord, there goes my Medjugorje dreams, won't be going to Medjugorje. Um, and then once I entered the community and, and um, and we found a place to live in Italy. It was yeah. just a drive away. So in these past, th this was 2010, these past thir 13 years, we've been to Medjugorje several times because it's just a drive away. We have wonderful friends who host us for free. Uh -huh. um, I just feel at home here. I've been blessed to visit a lot of Marian shrines, but here is the place that I've received grace in all of them, but uh -huh. I feel the most grace here. I feel, you just feel loved by your mother. Yeah. You feel the presence. Yeah. yeah, you sure do. And how would you make now the connection with Medjugorje? You have a community of the divine will by Luisa Picaretta. Yeah. Uh, what is the connection with Medjugorje with Luisa Picaretta for you? Ah, oh, that's a great question. Um, it's 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 all connected because our Blessed Mother was the one who lived perfectly in the divine will. She never took a breath out of it from the moment of her immaculate conception. So I really feel like Medjugorje is a preparation. It's our mother taking her little children step by step because she knows, you know, we can't learn everything all at once. You can't take a, you know, somebody who's ready for kindergarten and teach them doctorate level material. Yeah. So what she does is take us by the hand and, and bring us back to the heart of our faith. So the five pillars, you know, fasting, 
confession, the Eucharist, prayer from the heart, scripture reading. Um, these are all things that prepare our souls because the divine will is, it's the sanctity of sanctity. It's, it's the greatest gift that the Lord wants to, wants to give humanity now where his will, God himself wants to dwell within us in a very special way. He wants to animate everything that we do. Um, but it's such a great gift that we need to be prepared. We need to be well disposed. Um, so you know, I feel like that's what Our Lady's doing in Medjugorje. Because Father Ripperg, I just saw like on Instagram a shot, and he said everything is pointing to one thing: spirituality, living in the divine yeah. will. Yeah, this, this is it. How can somebody live in the divine will? What would you tell them? You know, they hear that now and say, "How do I do that?" Yeah, it's a great question. Um, desire it. <laughs> Yep. It's so easy. You know, I, I talked about, you know, you can't teach a kindergarten or doctorate level material, but we're always in kindergarten, yep. <laughs> you know? So the first step is just desiring it. You mm -hmm. know, Lord, I, I don't want to live according to my will anymore. I want to surrender my will totally to yours. I want to take the little drop of my human will, which is actually the greatest gift the Lord has given us. You know, our human will is a beautiful thing. It's what allows us to surrender to God freely. It's what allows us to love him freely. The Lord doesn't want slaves living in the divine will is living as his children so the first step is desiring it and the lord just swoops in you know um, none of us are totally free in the beginning i mean i'm still not totally free after 13 years i mean it's it's a lifetime journey but we're attached to so many things we have fears we have wounds there's so many reasons that i think the evil one wants to tell us you can't live in the divine well you're not worthy to live in the divine well it's impossible for you you've got this issue you've got, you've got that issue all you have to give the Lord is your desire and he takes care of everything little by little mm -hmm. he heals us he he I don't like the word stripping but I I like to call it he frees us he frees us from our attachments all these things that keep us from him um, he shows us that he's the fulfillment of all of our desires and all the things that we're grasping at in this world all the things that our human will wants um, is really just him. We just want to be loved by him. But he's such a gentleman. He does it little by little. He's not waiting until we're perfect in order to love us. Um, so we can live in the divine will right away. It just We just need that intention and that constant correspondence. Just being, he tells Louisa a lot, be faithful and attentive. Just, just being attentive to his voice, where he's leading you. Sometimes you don't know what you're doing today. I was kind of not sure what I was going to do. We were free today and the Lord just keeps leading me. And look, we just, end up doing it. Yeah, together. exactly, exactly. I very right. late the house, and here you are, you know? Right? It's nothing is by accident. He's always with us. Um, so, yeah, so that's the that's the first big step, you know, just desiring to live in his will and, mm -hmm. and just being attentive to his voice and his work in your life mm -hmm. um, and just corresponding with the same words that Our Lady used, you know, behold mm -hmm. the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word, whatever you want, Lord, I'm thy here. Thy will be done yeah. on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah, amen. And you, you talk about this voice of God how can somebody hear that voice how would you describe it oh that's that's a great question that's yeah that's that's all of our question um I think we're, we all hear the voice of the Lord in different ways mm -hmm. you know because for every creature that has ever existed past present and future there's a different language that I think the Lord uses with each of us because we're so unique he's formed our hearts differently um for me just it's as simple as paying attention to your thoughts you know, you know, putting yourself, you know, making sure you have quiet time during the day, you know, living in the divine will, you're praying always, Jesus is doing everything with you. But really to do that, to really to do that well, you need some time in quiet prayer where you can just be and love the Lord and let him love you and speak to him really sincerely. He wants to hear it all. He doesn't want us hiding anything. We don't need our masks. We don't need our fig leaves. We don't need our walls anymore. He's not scandalized. He's not afraid of what we've got. He knows it already, you know, and he just wants us to open everything without fear to him. And then just kind of paying attention to your thoughts, you know, um, sometimes people ask, well, how do you know if they're your thoughts or his thoughts or if they're the devil's thoughts or his thoughts? Um, you know, it's, it's not, there's not a clear cut answer, but he, he always it's speaks. It's a knowing. No? Yes. It's a knowing in yes. the heart. Yes. Yes. Like you play basketball. Some people play basketball and you know it will drop inside when you play basketball. Sometimes you know it. Yes. And it's an inner knowing, I would yeah. describe it. No, kind no of. that's perfect. Yeah. And you will discern it from over the, your exercises. Like you said, you mm -hmm. have the intention. And step by step, yeah. you will be guided into it through people, coincidences. Right. Like He's you met the sister and you're in, in the order now. Yeah. 
And you, your mission is to teach that? Your charism in the order to teach the divine will now? Well, our number one mission is, is uh, trying to live in it. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, we do. We feel very strongly called. We're not cloistered, because mm -hmm. Mother was a poor Claire, so she was cloistered. That's what she Maybe, was used yeah. to for 33 years. Uh -huh. But she felt like the Lord telling her he didn't want us cloistered because he wants us to share this great gift. It's the pearl of great price that he doesn't want us to keep to ourselves. You know, so as we're on this journey, you know, we share it with whoever we can. But it's so beautiful because when we first started coming to Medjugorje, you know, mm -hmm. about 13 years ago, hardly anybody knew about the divine will. Mm -hmm. Now we come to Medjugorje, it's harder to find somebody who doesn't know about the divine will than does know the, the divine will. So, so it's, it's spreading. It's spreading and it's yeah. a natural movement. We are entering the age of the 1000 year of peace. Our Lady Nessa yeah. never talks about doom and gloom. Something yeah. Good is coming. Yes, yes. There's a lot. And you know what, even I hate to say it, but even the internet is filled. I check the emails of our community and we get a lot of forwards and a lot of videos. Mm -hmm. There's so much negativity, even, even among Catholics like circles of the doom and gloom and yeah you, you don't want to keep your head in the sand and you know you have to be aware of what's going on to a certain extent so you know what you're praying for but our lady wants us to hope yes, you know to be the light jesus said be the light yeah the world, be on top of the mountain yeah salt. be salt exactly this is a time of grace like our lady of medjugorje says of conversion like these times are to bring more and more souls to her immaculate heart and we have the good news like yes. that's we have to remember that as christians we so have it's a solution and it's child like simple ask yeah. and you receive. have the intention and you will see exactly. from the heart like our lady says now the key exactly Exactly. And you've got a favorite saint? Is that Luisa Fibigareta now? Or? You know what's so funny? Luisa is so hidden. So, uh -huh. yeah, I wouldn't call her my favorite saint. She's just kind of someone I always have with me. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, I pray to her for her intercession because, you know, she lived in the divine will. She's the one who brought this great gift to us. She was, she was our Lord calls her the secretary. Mm -hmm. um, I go through phases, you know, Saint Joseph is up there. And recently it's been John Paul II, yeah, the Lord wow. showing me more and more his connection with the divine will and mm -hmm. yeah. Everyone who is connected to Our Lady strongly yeah. is connected to divine, divine yeah. will as she lived. Yeah. She's the perfect example for it, the fiat, no? Exactly. And the thing you learn more and more as you read the volumes and you're trying to live it, everything comes back to the divine will. You know, you see it everywhere. You see it in the lives of the saints. You hear them speak, you know, in the words that they speak. and. You see it in scripture because it's not something that just kind of the Lord came, came gave it to us out of nowhere. Like, oh, poof, here's this new gift. No. The Lord has been preparing the world for this gift for 2,000 years. It's been this beautiful, loving progression. And now it's it's a like... culmination, no? Yeah, the culmination. What do they call it? The crescendo of, yes. the, of the music. I'm not a musician, so I don't yeah. know the right word. So forgive me. But, but, it, but that's, that's yeah. It, yeah. And um, what what is your favorite spot in Mexico? You have one, what you you like to go here? Oh, that's a good question. My favorite spot in Medjugorje. I do love the top of Cross Mountain. Cross Mountain. Yeah. Oh, the tough one. Yeah, know? right? Uh -huh. The top. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, maybe there's something uh, symbolic about that. Uh -huh. But yeah, I like. I do love the top of Cross Mountain. That's one of my favorite spots. I like spot. Well, there's usually a lot of people up there, but I usually like spots that I can just sit in, in quiet oh, and and you can have that silence and that peace and just be alone and speaking one-on-one -on -one with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I just love nature. I mean, I'm a girl from the Bronx. I never realized, you know, mm -hmm. how good nature is. That's <laughs> an amazing story, yeah. from the Bronx to Italy. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. But I just, I guess I like places where I can just see God's creation. Because even as you read more and more the divine will, you just realize he's all over in creation. He's wooing us everywhere everywhere so it's just i just feel very strongly the love of god in nature so that's the top of the mountain said also, you know, yeah she said in one of the recent messages go into nature yeah there you will find god and you are, you are you are describing how to do it yeah and at the end of the video what would you tell people why come to magic oil one time oh why come to me do you want to feel loved <laughs> <laughs> We're always loved. God is always with us. But sometimes he knows we need that, you know, special palpable grace, you know, to recharge us. And that's that's what I feel like Medjugorje is. It's all of a sudden all of your worries and your issues kind of fade away for the few days that you're here. Yeah. And you just, you feel in your heart the truth that you've already known in your head right. that you are infinitely loved by a father in heaven and by a mother in heaven. Um, and what would you tell to people like, you know, there are a lot of people out there 
Um, they think God the Father is an angry old man with a white beard and he's judging. We have to perform to get his love. Yeah. Because we are living in a society like that. Yeah. You know, they, yeah. We are trained literally like that. But yeah. it's a wrong, wrong spiritual position or spiritual view. Yeah. And how, what would you tell them? How can they experience God the Father? The Ooh. Love of God? I understand that because I lived for many years like that. You know, I you still, I, yeah, I you still see those little remnants of it that I'm trying to, I'm trying to earn his love. Do you know what helps me? It's the simplest thing. And I did it with my devotion to Mary, with my devotion to St. Joseph, and also to understand God the Father. Mm -hmm. Ask him to show you who yes. he really is. Ask him to show you his love. And he does. Like, he I can does. tell he you some it. of the specific yeah. things he did for me, but he's going to do something different for you. But How just start with that prayer. Yeah. Oh, it was it was a gradual thing, but just through little signs, through scripture, yes. through things, through podcasts he's had me listen to, through words of people, but especially in prayer, yeah. just placing myself before the Blessed Sacrament and rather than, you know, flagellating myself. Jesus doesn't want that. Can no. you imagine? I mean... When we receive him in the Eucharist, when we're before him in the Blessed Sacrament, that's a moment deeper than when a husband and wife, you know, unite in marital love. Mm -hmm. And what husband wants to hear his wife at that moment say, oh, honey, I burnt the chicken today, and then I did this, and then I did that, you know? He just wants to look at her and love her. Yes, there's, of course, times for us to repent and to do an examination of conscience and, and go to confession. That's what strengthens our soul. but. You know, we also have to have time where we just have the Lord look at us with love. Just, I just want to share one quickly sure. thing that I, I learned that. recently. Okay, good. Okay. Um, in St. Paul, I think it's the letter to the Ephesians, maybe chapter 3 and 4. There's that line where he, he tells the Ephesians that you're God's handiwork. Mm -hmm. And I recently learned that the original Greek, mm -hmm. the original Greek mm -hmm. is from the word that we use for poetry, poema. So really, a more accurate translation of that line is, you're God's handiwork, you're God's poem. Yes. So and it's the truth. Yeah, and each, we're each a unique poem, and all a poem has to do is just, you know, be, be there and be beautiful. Yes, be there, be beautiful. And how can you be beautiful? Our Lady says, I'm yeah. beautiful because I love. Yes. Santa is delicious. I do a little thing with love. That's yeah. the secret. Yeah, and I think... And the also authentically we have to do it. Often we listen, we have to do no. Yes. It has to come from the heart. Our That's, lady says no. Yeah, and it's so simple. And I think the first place to start is allowing yourself to be loved by God. Yes. To be, start to, to be, be authentic. Yeah, because we can't we can't love, we can't give what we don't have. And yes. I know it's sometimes there's I think it's a temptation from the evil one. We always want to I want to love, I want to give, I want to do this. And that's so beautiful. You know, that's what we're called for. But the first thing we need to do is sit in that love, remain in that love, be filled with that love. That's the divine will. I receive the will of God. And then, yes. you know, then I can go out with, to others. It's called, I think in the catechism, it's called the Marian posture. Uh -huh. What did Mary do first? She opened herself up. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to that word. She received. Yeah and then gave back first to God for his glory yeah. and then to others wherever wherever God led her you know so that's the secret so that's absolutely right and you, you know my spiritual guide says to have always the clearness to hear that voice we need to yeah. go to confession yeah and what would you tell people you know confession very big in, in magic oil some people are scared to go to a priest mm -hmm. to tell what, what they did and all the things and, maybe 30 years they didn't go, what would you give them as a recommendation and what is the beauty of confession for you? Yeah, um, and this is only something I discovered recently. I'd go to confession knowing, believing that my sins were forgiven, but I think there was part of me that subconsciously thought it was, you know, Not the Lord, wait, again, you did it again. You told me you weren't going to do that anymore and you did it. And we all do that. Yeah, we really do, even if we're not aware of it. So I've started to try to go to confession, picturing Jesus in my mind through through the priest, no matter what the priest looks like, no matter how he responds in his humanity, Jesus there with such delight on his face, with love, receiving my sins, not with anger, but within a certain sense, joy. Not that he was joyful that we committed those sins, but the joy that we're trusting him 
to give up, to give those sins over to him to receive his mercy to, to let him be the savior it's very intimate to be intimate with yeah Jesus. yeah i think it was saint francis de sales that really was the apostle of teaching us how to benefit from our faults how to profit from our faults and you know each one of our falls there you, you hit the nail right on the head there they're actually moments of intimacy with the lord if we don't hide in shame like adam and eve yes. did but we actually open ourselves up and allow him to love us even in those miseries. And that's the great paradox. The more we do that without striving to be perfect on our own, because with our own strength, it doesn't, doesn't work. It doesn't work. Doesn't work. And Jesus it doesn't make said, us happy. I'm your savior. I'm there where you need to be saved. My hand is where you yeah. need to be saved. There yeah. I am, I'm the savior. Not yeah. that you need, don't need, need me. Yeah. We knew our condition. Yeah, our that's nose. it. We try to be our own savior. That's what it is. But it's like, no, I'm your savior. I'm and at the end, tell again, why, why are you Catholic? Why are you shining like this? Oh, because God is so merciful. Because <laughs> he's so good. Every, everything is his grace. Everything in his, his grace. And just one thing I want to add is don't be afraid of the cross because real, true, deep intimacy with the Lord and true joy has to go through the cross. There's no way around it. There's no way around it. And may, we may see other people that it looks like they found happiness without the cross. Mm -hmm. Either they haven't found true happiness that maybe we don't know what's going on or we don't see the suffering that they've endured inside. So don't be afraid of the cross. It's not God's punishment. It's God's way of leading you closer to him. Yes. Just open up and give him the cross. Tell yeah. him this is, this is the situation like a friend. Yeah, you know, like exactly. Mom, my brother died. I was very sad. I said, Jesus, I'm very sad. Yeah. And he wants, he's, he's there with you if you open up and then he guides you, you know? Exactly. And like you said in, in the talk, in every little step, by giving water to the flowers, whatever it is, eating, yeah. be with him. Yes. You know? It's the way of living with someone who's madly in love with you. Isn't yes. that great? <laughs> and he gives peace. It's our ego. Yeah. Our wishes bring us into unpeace, unlove, we, we want something. That's what I discovered, that's the school of Our Lady here as well. We need to give a hand everything over, yeah. no? and then you will find the peace, step by step, like you said, gentle, he does yeah. very gentle. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you so much for that beautiful interview. Oh, thank you, Tom, this is great. <laughs>